What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Summer with Summer Fun Fitness. I post on Instagram the most. I'm a calisthenics athlete, all self-taught. So that means I've gone into the place where I am today by programming myself. And so a question I often get is, how do you do that? How do you schedule your workouts? That's what we're gonna cover today. I'm gonna try and cover it as quickly as I can. So you might have to do a follow-up video to this. So first of all, the thing that I have to say is, if you really want to progress in calisthenics and your sport quickly, I recommend recommend buying somebody's guide or hiring a professional, somebody like me, to actually do a custom program for you. But if you don't have the money to do that, you will have to program it yourself, which just means more investment of time on your end because you're gonna have to do a lot of research. Saying all that, it is definitely possible. I programmed myself, I figured it out, but I definitely didn't learn as fast as I could have if I had hired a professional. So today we're gonna cover how to pick your goals and then schedule your workout around that. We're gonna talk about how to do this if you're already bodybuilding or if you're already weightlifting. How how to incorporate calisthenics into your program, how to do it if you are only doing calisthenics, and how to program it if you're already doing a sport. So say you are a rock climber, how are you going to add calisthenics training into your regular workout program? So no matter how much time you have to train or whatever way you're going to train, you do have to start with knowing what your goals are. And that is how we're going to schedule your program. So what I want you to do is sit down, carve out 10 minutes of time, and I want you to come up with what is your main goal? What is the main goal? Because we have to break it down to then create your workout program. But I also want to encourage you to have a balanced body. So that means that I want you, if possible, to also have push goals, pull goals, and mobility goals, as well as your skill goals. So you might have to, it might take some time to create this, but what is going to happen is, say for me, right now, most of my goals are push based, but I still need some pull goals in there just to keep my body balanced, but they're just going to be very minor compared to my push ones. And I'm just going to have them in there to keep my body healthy. Because if you only do pull or you only do push, you're going to end up with some imbalances and some issues with your body in the future. So it's good to have a balance there. I know that some of you might have trouble figuring out what your mobility goals are. How we figure that out is first we come up with your main goal. So say your main goal is to get a handstand. This is just an example. Your main goal could be to get pull-ups or push-ups, things like that. But say your main one is a handstand. So then we're going to create mobility goals based off of your main goal. So for a handstand, you need to be able to have very open shoulders. So you need wrist and your shoulder to be able to be in a straight line. Most people would be at this range, so we need to open it up. And also, say if you want to do your handstand press, it's going to be much easier if you have hip mobility. So you want to incorporate hip mobility. So if my main goal is a handstand press and a handstand, my mobility goals may be working on my shoulder and working on my hips. An example would be a pancake stretch, and that is where you have your legs open and your goal is to get your tummy down. You might not be at that point yet, but that would be the goal. Now that you figured out your main goal, you would spend some time breaking that down. So for me, say my main goal right now is a one arm handstand. Obviously that is a little bit high, like I'm not at that main goal. So there's some little ways to break it apart. So it may be like for me, just being able to shift the weight from one shoulder to the other. And then the other one would be coming up to fingertips and then coming up to four fingertips and so on. So you break down your goal and that's gonna help you create your program. And then just make sure you have a balance of pushing and pulling and then as well as your mobility and always always good to have legs in there too and also some cardio we definitely want a balanced body and a happy heart and to be honest your goals don't have to be so big your goals could be i want to walk up the stairs easier so that could be your cardio goal i want to climb five flights of stairs without running out of breath, or um, I just want to be able to do five push-ups. So they don't have to be these humongous goals. They can be these smaller ones that lead to a bigger goal down the road. Like if you want to do handstand push-ups one day, your goal maybe now would be to get good at push-ups and to get good at a 10 second handstand. And then you slowly build up that way. But it is important to have 
goals, but yes, they don't have to be as crazy as a one arm hat. I think I'll have to make another video on how to goal set, but basically to start, write out your main goal and then write out some goals for the opposing muscles. So whether it's a different pole goal or mobility, also have cardio and some legs in there. Legs are very important. Even if it's just a small amount, you still wanna be able to train them at least once a week or just add them into your full body training. Okay, so now that you have your goals picked out, we can start to figure out how we're gonna work towards those goals. And in order to do that, we need to know how often are you gonna be training and what split are you going to use in order to achieve those goals. But basically you take your goals and then we're gonna break them apart into pushing goals, pulling goals, our mobility, and our flexibility. And then once you've figured out, hey, am I gonna do a push-pull legs? Am I going to do a full body? Then you can pick your exercises appropriate to your goals. So you'll have to take a look at the goal that you have and then find and select exercises that match with that goal. So if we wanna work on getting our pull-ups, we're going to figure out different regressions of our pull-ups in order to program that into either our pull day or our full body day to help us work towards that goal. But you need to have those goals in mind in order to pick your exercises so that you stay committed, you know why you're exercising, and you have this beautiful shiny goal to achieve. So that way we can continuously progress for the rest of our lives. And the nice thing about doing calisthenics is there's always a harder progression. No matter what, every time you get a goal, a new door opens and there's something else you can work on. Like I never thought I'd be working on one arm handstands. When I started handstand training, all I wanted to do was hold a handstand for 10 seconds, which took me 13 months to get, but I wasn't thinking that far. But as soon as I got that 10 seconds, it was like, okay, what next, what next, what next, what next? Keeping evaluating my goals and progressing on them and choosing exercises that are helping me attain, obtain those goals and then program them in. Let's move on to the next part. Designing a program is figuring out how much time you have are you only available to do a workout twice a week? Are you wanting to do five days a week? Are you wanting to do four days a week? Cause that's gonna really affect your split. What body parts you're training per day, how you're training. If you're doing three or less days a week, then you're gonna program full body. And if you watch my last YouTube video, there was a bunch of exercises there and teaches you how to program a full body workout. So you're doing skills, you're doing two push, two pull, and then adding mobility and cool down. If you're gonna do more than three days a week, then you have some options. You could do a push pull legs, a bent arm or straight arm split. You could also do a push day, a pull day. You could do a back and bicep days. There's different options. If you're already familiar with bodybuilding programs, you could do the same with calisthenics. The way I started was with bodybuilding. So it was many years ago that I was already going to the gym and I wanted to start calisthenics training. So what you do if you're already going to the gym, you already have a program, is find easy ways to add calisthenics in. Because part of the problem is when you start doing calisthenics, your wrists are not going to be strong. So what I would do is I'd go to the gym and I could only do 10 minutes on my wrist before they were sore. So over time, I built that up. I think it took me a year and a half or more to get towards just calisthenics training. It just takes time to build up that strength. If you're already working out, you could do 10 minutes at the start of just calisthenics. So push up, pull ups, dips, handstands, watch some other videos for on my channel for exercises. And then during your workout, add in calisthenics. So if you're doing tricep extensions on a cable machine, what I would do is I would just superset with calisthenics. So I would do tricep cables and then drop on the ground and do tricep push ups. So I'm actually working on my wrists. I'm still having that muscle fatigue. I'm still working on hypertrophy, but I'm also working on my whole body coordination by adding in those calisthenics movements. If you're already weightlifter, just think of ways to superset with calisthenics and also have 10 minutes or more of just calisthenics at the start or at the end. And if you're already bodybuilding, make sure that you have some calisthenics goals. You wanna be able to do muscle ups or pull ups. And if you watch my how to train calisthenics video or how to start calisthenics video, you'll have more examples there. Also, if you're a bodybuilder, I would highly recommend having mobility goals because when you actually increase your mobility, you're gonna get much stronger. You're gonna have your tendons and your ligaments and everything are gonna be able to handle a load in a greater range of motion. So you're gonna actually benefit your bodybuilding so much more by being mobile. And it's also gonna help you move throughout your life 
really well because with bodybuilding you're usually working on very specific planes of motion and you're not doing too much twisting so it's really good to work on mobility to make sure that you can elegantly get off the ground and use the strength that you've developed through bodybuilding but just make sure that you're mobile and you're moving so if there's any tip i would have on your bodybuilding it's to add in mobility training but that's an easy way on how to incorporate it into bodybuilding what you're already doing even simple things like if you're squatting um, it's always good to do some body weight squats to work on your neural muscular connectivity before you do it so add in some body weight squats at the start and then once you're done maybe add in some pistol squats as your calisthenics goal or break down the pistol squats do a regression until you can get to that main goal of pistol squats but yeah that's how i would incorporate it into bodybuilding now if you're somebody who is doing a sport let's just pick rock climbing if you're doing rock climbing three times a week and you want to work on calisthenics Take a look at what you're already doing. If you're doing rock climbing, you're doing a ton of pulling movements. And if you only rock climb, you're gonna end up with a really developed back and an underdeveloped pec. So that's gonna mean that your shoulders are gonna roll forward and you have some postural issues. What we would want to do is use calisthenics as a way to balance out your body. So if you're doing three days a week of rock climbing, of pulling exercises, I would have pushing goal. And I would mostly train pushing and mobility on my calisthenics days. So format it that way. And again, if you wanna know how to format a day's workout, go check out my other video and I'll make another one after this with more details. But that's what I would do. Three days a week, rock climbing, two days of pushing and some mobility. So with rock climbing, you're gonna to wanna to work on your shoulder mobility quite a bit because you wanna keep healthy scaps. So you might be doing a lot of scapular pushing and some push-ups and other things like that. But it doesn't have to be rock climbing. It could be you play soccer three days a week and now you want to work on your upper body because soccer is working on your cardio. It's working on your lower body. So then you'd want to supplement it with calisthenics upper body. And so for that, if you're playing something like soccer, you might want to have full body days on your calisthenics days. So we're doing two push, two pull and your mobility because you want to make sure that your hips are working well and your knees and your ankles are healthy for your spine. So if you're brand new to working out, you're going to find that it would probably be best to hire a coach, somebody who's going to help you work on developing control over your body. There's something called neuromuscular control, and that's ability to actually connect with that muscle to cause it to contract. And it takes some time to learn. Usually beginners will actually see significant progress in the first eight weeks because they start to develop that connection. Where somebody who's already been working out, our progress is quite slow. As a newbie, you get all these gains right away as you learn to control your body. So it's actually pretty rewarding to start as a beginner. You gotta start simple. You gotta build simple, basic strength. And there is no shame in learning how to do push-ups. No shame, no shame. Doesn't matter if you are 50 and you've never done a push-up, doesn't matter. Just start, don't worry about other people's journey. Don't worry that other people are ahead of you because no matter what, you're always gonna be somebody's goals, always. There's always gonna be somebody who wants to be like you. So don't worry about it, just start. This is for you and for you to live a better life. So if you can't do one push up, it's all good. We'll get you there. No problem, no shame, especially because if you have shame around doing basic exercises, it's gonna be so hard for you to progress because you're gonna be thinking negative thoughts. Instead, you have to think, I can do this and I'm so excited for the day that I can do a full push up or pull up, things like that. So if you are a newbie, I would probably do a full body split, very basic and you wanna be working on the same pattern. So you don't want to be programming a bunch of different exercises all the time because we need to work on connecting with your body. So basic things like regressions of push-ups, pull-ups, dips, and squats, that would probably be a beginner's goal. Just work on those things, on mastering those things, and then work on your whole body mobility. If you're somebody who sits a lot, like me, I work a 40 hour a week job at a desk, I would recommend working on your mobility and as well as your thoracic working on your spine because it's hard to keep this rolled back um, when you're working, even if you're at a standing desk. But doing things like cat cows, hollow bodies, uh, scapular push-ups, where you're just moving your scaps, you can do the same with pulling. But yeah, we'll talk about that in another video. Oh, your other option, if you're gonna do full body is to do push-pull legs. 
I would recommend as a beginner that you have breaks. Say you did three days a week, you would have a rest day in between to allow your body to recover. Recovery is important. You don't want to go ham like so hard so that you actually regress in your strength because it was just too much load for your body. So make sure you have planned rest days no matter what level of fitness you are at so that you can actually heal and progress because we're going to create these new adaptations in our rest periods. So there's some things that everybody can do every single day and those would be if there was one thing I was going to recommend. I would start working on hollow body holds. No matter who you are, if you want better core control and to move through your life easier, you need to be doing hollow body hold. And you can do regressions and progressions of that, but I would do that every day, okay? if not twice a day, just so that you actually start working on controlling your core because our core connects everything. This is like our foundation. All of our arms, our legs, our, everything connects off of our core. So we need to have excellent control there to have control of our entire body and move through life easier. So yeah, I'd recommend hollow bodies for sure. I know that this was a quicker video and you probably have way more questions. So let me know in the comments below what you want me to cover next. I was trying to do this quick, but you know, I never do this quick because I always have so much information to share, but we'll talk more in the future. Please like and subscribe so I can quit my day job. <laughs> But anyways, thank you. My name's Summer and follow me on Instagram for daily stuff. And I'll put some video recommendations here for you to watch next. Thank you for joining me guys. Bye.